So what we've been doing is um, on a grant funded by uh, the government looking at um, a series of different urban, uh, complex terrain, uh, hybrid uh, and, and large scale combat scenarios and we spent most of a month uh, last um, March, April going through uh, five different vignettes in a synthetic city called Arcaria which is a NATO product where we essentially were um, testing in a tabletop environment the key features of what a future uh, Australian battle group is going to encounter when it gets into that remote autonomous systems environment. What we're doing now is doing some human experimentation to build on uh, the tabletop work we did last year. So it was an autonomous systems war game that's focused on a couple of things. It focused on the utility of autonomous systems for tactical and operational use by Australia and like-minded nations, um, but also then to look at the, uh, the ethical challenges of how, uh, how you would operate such autonomous systems if you gave them true autonomy to make decisions on the battlefield. So I was the battle group commander for the Blue Force Battle Group. So I am a battle group commander in the Australian Army and I brought my planning team down to uh, plan five operational missions uh, for University of New South, New South Wales to test those concepts. I've uh, had the uh, privilege of being somewhat involved in some of the international debate around autonomous weapons. Um, as, as one of the civil society groups uh, has named itself, there's a, there's a campaign to ban killer, we killer robots, as they call them. Um, and there are lots of ethical uh, questions around the use of these systems. But it struck me um, in those debates that many of the, the principled ethical uh, issues that are raised, which are important, are not being weighed against the, the potential uh, operational value of these systems in potentially saving lives. And I think um, related to that, it, there's, there's a lack of understanding of how these systems may actually be used in practice. And so what we wanted to do here was to try to um, replicate something that's going to happen in the future, which of course is always very difficult to do, but to try to get a sense of just how these systems will be used and what perhaps unexpected ethical challenges, but also ethical pluses um, might arise out of the experience. My name is Dr. Michael Cray, I'm CEO and founder of Skyborne Technologies and what Skyborne Technologies is all about is providing aerial fire support for the dismounted combat level. So we're here today to support uh, UNSW Canberra uh, in their uh, warfighting experimental concepts with our robotic platforms. Uh, the future for these sorts of robotic platforms is really exciting. We don't know exactly where it's going to head. We do know it's going to play a major role in the future of the battlefield. So Bio5, we're a Australian SME specialising in the mechanical engineering design and manufacture of unmanned ground vehicles and specialist defence capability. It's really an enhancement of dismounted or in support of dismounted uh, combat operations. So um, it's an enabler to um, you know, allow soldiers to effectively you know, push forward onto their objective or a target and use it either in an ISR or in a combative role. I'm Stephen Bornstein, I'm the CEO of Athena Artificial Intelligence and we specialise in decision support tools for the warfighter. So our product really consists of two primary capabilities. The first is our vision product, which is an AI target recognition tool set, and then that's got decision support features on from that. And then our second product is our geospatial product, and that combines digital terrain elevation data, as well as satellite imagery, and we use that for intelligent path planning for robotics and autonomous systems, as well as optimal site placement for static-based assets, such as uh, air defense systems, uh, ambushes, javelin missiles, and so on. So we have been working for a couple of years now to try to understand a bit better the impact of uh, robotic and autonomous systems on warfighting at the tactical and operational level. We're interested in the ethics of how um, AI and other advanced autonomous systems are going to uh, you know, be employed on the battlefield. But we recognize that in order to make sensible judgments about that, you've got to have an understanding of 
how those systems will be employed. So we have a group of experts uh, looking at what the character of war is likely to be in the next 20 to 25 years and we're focusing on um, advanced and emerging technologies on urban conflict, on unconventional and hybrid warfare, and then also on uh, a series of critical technologies that we think are going to influence um, things like space warfare, AI, uh, and a variety of other military elements. During the tabletop exercise, we had one particular moment in one of the vignettes, one of the scenarios, where a armoured unit tried to push through a fairly narrow piece of terrain. They were forced to dismount because of the, uh, the narrowness of the, the route they were moving through. And then they were attacked by a swarm of enemy force uh, UAVs, you know, uninhabited air vehicles. And that killed more people in about two minutes on Blue Force than any other engagement in the entire two weeks of the war game. So we wanted to take that into the real world um, and play that scenario or a version of that scenario a number of times with humans to see whether uh, the behaviour would be similar or whether the outcome would be different if we do it with actual troops. So one of the things as a non-military and non-trained person that I found really interesting was uh, the collective imagination piece that goes into the wargaming. So everyone being able to really visualize what's going on in a similar way or dissimilar way and how that impacts the momentum of how things move within the war game, but also how things are used or not used based on previous experience, um, how the problem set is viewed. Um, being similar or dissimilar actually has quite a um, big outcome. And then the other thing was um, the trust piece that I think um, most people will speak about coming out of it, which is different people having varying comfortability with, um, with different types of technology essentially and how that really um, impacts how it's employed kind of from person to person being really interesting. I'm always looking for opportunities for adventure and experience and the chances to meet people who know things that I know nothing about. And in this case, um, I was contacted about a year ago about the, the possibility of writing a, um, a futuristic military thriller that would showcase some of the research into potential future military conflicts um, being done by UNSW and ADFA and uh, ideally get some of that research to a broader audience beyond the people who only read non-fiction or only read academic texts. So um, I've written um, thrillers before. Military fiction is uh, largely new to me though, so I'm enjoying the opportunity not only to see some um, autonomous weapons, the kinds of things that will be um, fighting wars in the future, and indeed are fighting some wars now, uh, but also the chance to meet more military people and pick up the lingo and the language and the register and the attitude and all those things to make the characters more authentic. Yeah, at the moment as a role player you got to experience what it is to be observed by an autonomous, semi-autonomous system that's hanging in the sky and that has lethal capabilities that it can really shoot at you. That was a quite frightening thing because with a human, maybe you can talk, maybe it can hear you, but with something that's hanging over you, it has seen you, you know it can launch a grenade at you. That makes the game a bit different. There are, there are different ways to, to think about the ethics of war, and, and it, um, people do, do differ, and I do think of it as about trade-offs to some degree. I think, um, the, for me, it's the, the just war tradition is trying to navigate a, a very tricky path between two realities. One is that war is terrible um, and the other is that war is sometimes necessary and if we if we pull too far on one side or the other we either make it impossible to fight wars that need to be fought or we, we fight wars in a way that allows too much um, unnecessary death and destruction. And I do think that that's what we're trying to to understand better in this project is where that central line is, where that, that very narrow path that balances those two realities actually lies.